Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Back. Outside the cinema. Your source for cult movie discussion. Let's hope everything works. <laughs> Let's hope everything works. Uh, first off, apologies for the way the show sounded last week. Uh, had no idea. Uh, everything. It's weird because <laughs> we've been working with this Riverside software. And, like, in theory, it's awesome. Right? Yeah. Like, in theory, it does everything we want it to do. We just haven't been able to hit it quite right yet. <laughs> Last week, yeah. I thought we did. All of, Chris's, all of Chris's recordings uploaded. He didn't drop out at any point. We had everything we needed. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. then, I so I, I export everything. I run the same things over it I always do. And somewhere along the line, Chris's air filter in the background became like the third host of the show. Yeah, and it's been going since November, which is right. messed up. Right. So I don't know if there was a setting somewhere. Or what it was, but so I apologize for that. I did upload a new version of it earlier today. The sound is still there, but it is definitely lower than it was before. So if you started listening to the show last week and you couldn't handle the the sound in the background, uh, Travis, I don't have time for this right now. <laughs> that's he, what is he? That's your reasoning to everybody that had a problem. No, he's with the requesting. Sound. He's requesting <laughs> some app approve. Fine, go. No, I don't want to enter my password. <laughs> and now Chris's Chris's audio will drop out because I did that. Um yeah. uh yeah, so I re-uploaded a new version of it. Uh it's better. The levels are better. It's still there a little bit. I apologize. Um Chris and I did some tests before we before we started today. Yeah. And we should be good. We should be good. We're live on Twitch also. Uh so if you're hanging out on Twitch to watch us live, thank you very much for being there. I should put that up in front of me too to make sure. Um just so I can I can monitor. Uh open in the app store. Again with I don't need no. God damn it. Un <laughs> unreal. Unreal. Close. <coughs> Why is this happening to me? And your dog's going nuts in the background. Everyone hey, wins. Hey, the air filter used to cover that up, so I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Good. All right, here, just turn it off. <laughs> just turn the volume off, Bill. No, because, you know, the one time I don't have it in front of me will be the one time somebody has something in the chat room. Oh, no, I'm like, not laughing at that at all. No, I totally get that. Um. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So you can... i got to close this. i got too much light going on. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're never. Getting if you want to re-download done. the show, you can re-download the show with a better sounding file. Hopefully, everything is good to hear to go. We are live on Twitch uh, as we are each and every week when we record at two forty-five p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out with us. This week's show programmed by Patreon follower, friend, countryman. Actually, I don't think he's a countryman. I think he's from the UK. Uh, Howard, ancient, ancient countryman. Ancient country. He's from the old England where we live is the new England. Yes. So we're uh, we're we're um six hours behind and a step ahead. I don't know. No, not we're not really. a step ahead anymore, man. I, <laughs> not anymore. No, about four years ago we just kind of sat down and pooped our pants. Yeah. And, <laughs> and regressed back to being children. Uh mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so anyway, um we are uh we are doing Howard's picks this week. He chose uh, the Firm, which was a BBC made-for-TV movie starring the one and only Gary Oldman in an early performance of him, directed by Alan Clark. Yeah, uh, and that's we, kind of a that's a little bit of a misnomer because here he is actually a young man. This is true. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have covered a number of Alan Clark's movies. I feel like we've also done a number of football hooligan movies. Yeah, uh, so and I have will... the same reaction to every single one. Right. See my new my my new Dan Housen mug. Who is gotta, that? He's a wrestler. Oh, okay. So nice. Yeah. Why is he looking a little bit like Sting? Because that's kind of his thing. Okay. He's, uh, he's goofy, but the he very uh very, very what caffeinated, caffeinated very, very evil. Gotcha. Yep. Because his whole tagline is very uh very nice, uh, very evil, very nice is his <laughs> thing. All right, but um, he uh, right. did a thing with Rootless Coffee. I feel like they should be a sponsor for me because I talk about them a lot. But Rootless Coffee, if you guys want good craft, slow like small company coffee, Rootless is is awesome. 
anyway, uh, yes. So we're doing another football, football, another foosball hooligan movie. Yeah. Uh, and then we are going to be doing Spring from the directors of what are their movies again? I can never remember. Like I love their stuff, but like I can never remember the names of the flicks. Re- Resolution, The Endless, and Synchronic. And Synchronic. I haven't seen Synchronic. Is that is that the most recent one? Yes, and that okay. one it's not like their others for a decent portion of there's a there's like a sci-fi mystery going on what is what is going on yeah yeah but then when what is happening when you find out what's really happening what what is the matter is something really going on yeah did you not hear that no out of nowhere my podcast player started playing the nikki glazer podcast yeah no i didn't hear that at all you didn't hear it no because i would have said hey it's nikki glazer she's dirty you don't hear that no Weird. Yeah, no, nothing. Weird. All I have is a tiny buzz from... There, I fixed that. And you can hear me, the uh, weird. Oh, yeah, know. yeah. What? Is, yeah. I, I don't know. Sorry, continue. I missed all, right. all of that because... Uh, that Yeah, fine. Continue. Please. Oh, yeah, synchronic. So, like, like it's got a mystery going on like all the others. Um, Not a mystery box kind of mystery, but one that actually gets answered. And um, for about half the movie, you're like, what? what, how, what is... Where is this? This I don't even. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh shit! So the, I think they write their movies like mysteries. Like this is yeah. what this is what the 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 thing is going to be. So now we go back and we drop hints, Makes sense. going in and write a story. And I, I'm not a huge Anthony Mackie fan. I mean, I'm I'm probably, you know, a little more than you know, maybe maybe sixty percent a fan. Um, but I liked him in it, so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I recommend it. It's a it's a decent at least one time watch. Okay. I like all this stuff so far. Well, we're doing spring. I don't know whether we actually said whether we're we're, we're doing spring, I think uh, which did. is Howard's other pick. I don't know if I did. I got so confused right there because my Spotify just started playing podcasts. <laughs> I do love the Nikki Glazer podcast. Um very funny, very evil. I like um, her. I like her a lot. Yeah, no, she's good. She's 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 like the right amount of raunchy. Yep. But not yep. too much, where you're like, okay, we get it. Right, and she <laughs> l- makes fun of herself a lot, which I really very, like. Yes, very self-deprecating. Yeah. So that's what we're doing this week. So uh, if you want to be like Howard and you want to program the show, uh, you can do that. If you're one of our Patreon members, go to patreon.com slash outside the cinema. Uh, $5 a month gets you access to the show archives. It also gets you access to uh, the private feed. I also gets you access to, um, you know, picking movies for the show. We actually got actually from we got a new one the other day. Hold please, and I'll tell you who. <laughs> uh, where, what is what is this I'm looking at? What is going? Why? Why? It's the liner notes to the Nikki Glazer podcast. Ah, uh, no. Okay, here we go. So Mark <laughs> joined up. Okay. Mark joined up, and he said, uh, "Sir Bill and Mister Chris, thank you. Uh, I now have access to the archives." As for suggestions, I don't know if you would if you guys have ever if you guys have ever covered this one, but Dario Argento wrote a spaghetti western version of the Seven Samurai minus two called Five Man Army. Huh. I've never seen Five Man Army. No. I've heard about it for years, but I've never watched it, so that's definitely a cool one. Other film suggestions I can make Manhunt in the City with Henry Silva and then also Michael Mann's Thief or Vice Squad with Wings Hauser. We did Vice Squad, I think. I don't remember. He did something with Wings Hauser. But no, he's dialed in on the heart of the show. That is definitely. Yeah. Oh, he knows. He knows. He knows. What I think so is he... really funny is that the Italians are going to do a spaghetti Western version of Seven Samurai, and it's about five people. That tracks, actually, oh, for right. spaghetti Westerns, doesn't we it? We couldn't afford the other two people. Exactly. We can't <laughs> even get two extras to fill out this group. No. no. <laughs> we didn't have enough spaghetti. Uh, that's what. That's how they got paid. That's why it was called Spaghetti Westerns, right? Because they got paid in spaghetti. He also mentioned some potential top six lists if we wanted to redo that top six. Oh Rucker yeah, Hauer we should films. go back to those. So, top six what? Uh, Rutger Hauer films. I thought you, you said Ron Howard films. You stop flapping your gums, you would have heard me. You hired me to talk, so you get I what didn't you get. Hire you. You get I what asked. you get. 
as yeah, a friend. I know. Well, one time you gave me food, so that's like payment. So I've given um, you food many times over the years. Well, Don't no, the fir- okay, like the that. first time. There you go. The first time you gave me food, that was payment. I'm like a fucking house elf that doesn't live there. <laughs> How many times did you go when you used to come to the house for when you used to come to the studio for the show? <laughs> do you remember how many times you'd walk out of here with like a giant bowl of chili? That or is like, true. That is true. That is true. You, you would just take all our leftovers. Yeah, because I couldn't take the dog. So there we go. Yeah. I don't even know where he is. He's usually in here. He hasn't been in here yet. So <laughs> uh, he also said Japanese crime and samurai films. I also <laughs> apologize for suff- for fucked up my spelling. I only realized once the message was sent. Hmm. Once again, thank you and your podcast. You are top three. Nice. Cool. So thank nice. you very much, thank Mark. You. We'll get to some of those picks. And I know Ollie had actually also mentioned some stuff, so we got some stuff from Ollie to do. He wants us to do Troll and Snatch. Because <laughs> he wants the title of the show to be Troll Snatch. Well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> obviously. I would rather watch that movie, to be honest. Oh, I watched Troll on VHS in 1986, right before I watched Alien, right before we went to see Aliens. Let me ask you this. That's the best thing I can say about Troll. <laughs> let me ask you. Let me ask you this question. Because yeah. I was thinking about it the other day when when I got Mark's email, and we used to do a top six list and two reviews every single episode. Yeah. And yet the episodes were still like under two hours. <laughs> Usually. I mean, occasionally they would go over two hours, but yeah, like yeah. we dropped the third segment a couple years ago and our shows aren't really any shorter. Like were our reviews just infinitely less like they might have been shorter. Yeah. I don't know. Sean's in the chat room and he says he missed the top six list as well. Um, I mean, what we're doing now is essentially like a top six list. And then you would look at the time and you would arrange the reviews to be a certain length to fit the time. Well, I mean, I didn't arrange it that way. It just it just kind of ended up that way. No, but you watched and 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 always and you're like, "All right, let's do this part." And you keep it going. So I think that's why right. the show remains the same length. Because I Maybe, mean, if I don't know. If we're reviewing 5 Samurai in Italy, um <laughs> how long is that review going to take? <laughs> Right. Some of those Italian films. No, though, I end know. Up getting, I know. We can add, like, what are we going to say about Troll? It's the precursor to Troll Two. That is true. Well, it is. Troll and it Two. Isn't. Troll Two. Maybe the only movie that's worse than Troll. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's Top Ghoulies Two, right? Why troll. Yeah. Well, we did the Ghoulies. Did we do? Did we do the whole series of Ghoulies? I don't think so. Did we? we did I don't critters, fucking right? know. No, we did. We did all the ghoulies because I remember we watched ghoulies go to college or whatever it was. Ah, uh, shit. Okay, so there's a bunch of stuff I deleted as soon as I was done watching it. Uh, no, I completely understand. And it deleted like out of my memory, not out off a computer or anything, but like. Like legitimately just removed it from your memory. Yeah. Yeah. Overrode it with zeros ready for new info. Also, when we did top <laughs> six list, we didn't. We also didn't friggin riff at the beginning of a show like we do now. We'd get right into it. Right. Yeah, way more drops, Sean says, too. Yeah. God, we used to, man, I used to put so much work into the show. <laughs> we had commercial breaks. We had sponsors. Yeah. We had yeah. Uh, trailer drop. We had all kinds of stuff, man. I don't do any of that anymore. <laughs> well, I mean, part of the thing, if you think about it, really, is like podcasts got super popular. And then the only ones that ever get any kind of recognition regardless of the work put into the shows is uh ones with famous people and that's kind of demoralizing yeah it's like why are you going to put that time and effort into it our listeners still love what we do right so like they're not going to care if we don't play trailer audio yeah it's cool but like that's not why they're here you know Right, right. Because if you want the trailer audio, you can just oh hey, they're doing that show. I'm yeah, go but I used it. to dig, and I'd get all those old like um, radio yeah. commercials. And oh yeah, yeah. It it is a little tough when you see a brand Joe, new show with jackasses a... like Joe Rogan get two hundred million dollars. That's <laughs> like... that's such a that's such an outlier though. Isn't that such a weird thing? Yeah, I mean. There's I mean, other I, ones that got deals like that, but I don't think they're that big. I like what we do. I don't see how it's a sustainable money maker for another business. I don't get that. 
Well, the thing I think is when you get that level of popularity and that amount of people that listen on a regular basis, even on your peaks and valleys, you're still drawing. Oh, you're on the selling name. ads based on based on an overall based on the audience, not engagement or anything. So right. if yeah, so and it's even easier to see who's subscribed and downloads the show on the regular, whether they listen to it or not, is a whole nother thing. It doesn't matter. It's just based on the numbers. Yeah, I mean. When we used to be on, um, was it Mevio? When we were on Mevio and we were pulling hundreds of thousands of downloads every week. Mm. Like, I know there wasn't 100,000, 150,000 people listening to the show. <laughs> but where yeah. Mevio was putting it, it was downloading that many times. Right. So it was literally just based on the numbers. Yeah. Yeah. It is what it is. I mean, hey, whatever. We're still doing it. I don't care. Yeah. Hey, as long as people are still nice to us, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, Sean's still. Sean's saying he's really glad that we're we're still around. We're the second podcast he ever listened to. Oh, very nice. So yeah, I mean, I don't remember the first one. Must have been Cinema Diabolica, which has come and gone like twenty five times since then. <laughs> um, I do love that that F thirteen does that though. Every now and then they'll just like randomly be a Cinema Diabolica episode. Yeah, like yeah. he just does not fucking care. Like, nope. <laughs> it's like whatever. He's like, I feel like talking about something today. I'll record it. <laughs> I don't know. Meanwhile, yeah. DZ sending me creepy DMs in my friggin' Instagram every time I post something. <laughs> Keep it 100 emoji. What? <laughs> Settle down, man. Yeah, that tracks. Sounds about right. Speaking <laughs> of tracking, our first film tonight suggested to us by Howard. I meant to say suggested. I did just say suggested. I know. I wasn't uh, going to say anything because you covered it so well. Wasn't bad. No. I'm the only idiot that points out when I make my own mistakes. <laughs> like, nobody would say anything. No. But, like, I'll mispronounce something, and they would have let it go, and I'm just like, do you hear me mispronounce that, Chris? <laughs> That's kind of our thing. I know. <laughs> oh, man, so, like, I'm growing my hair out, and I really hate the length it's at right now. Oh. Because I'm, like, yeah. it's like, so... It's just kind of weird because it's not long enough to kind of fall down up here. So, like, my receded hairline looks a lot more perturbed than it actually is. Oh, and it's but super like, dry out, too. So it's oh, going to be yes. all staticky, yeah. right? Yeah. All staticky. And I, yeah. I don't know. For some reason, I decided I was going to grow my hair out. And I haven't grown my hair out since I was, like, an early teenager. Uh, like, so, and I lost so much hair over the pandemic because, you know, stress. Mm. Um, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to grow my hair out now for a couple of years and just like let it go while I still have enough of it and if it gets to the point where it's too thin you know I just I just start shaving it off whatever I don't I don't I yeah. say I don't care yeah. I do I'm actually kind of a vain person well um, hair uh, hair's a, a, a it's a very specific thing well I mean you know it, it, here's the it thing. helps if you're define a dude, you from a distance and all that right but if you're a dude that's like I'm like covered in tattoos like and you try to tell me like yeah, it's a vanity thing. Yeah, I love tattoos, but like, hmm. I like tattoos because I like the way they look. Yeah. So it's like, it's a vain thing. <laughs> like it is. Yeah, it yeah. is what it is. I don't know why I'm sharing any of this. Why don't we just play the trailer for Spring? I don't know. You're in control. All right. Well, here's the trailer for Spring. <laughs> if you guys are watching the show live on uh, on Twitch, you get to see it. Um, and if you're listening, you get to hear it. And if you want to see it, you can go back to Twitch and watch it. Anyway, here's Spring. Uh, no, that's not right. <laughs> Hang on. No, liberty, I, forgot liberty, to, I, forgot, liberty. I forgot to hit it live. All right, here we go. Let's try that again. Look, man, you, you need to change up your environment. You're the most attractive person I've ever seen. Go out with me tomorrow night. No, no. Buongiorno. Do you remember my name? You never told me. Scusa. You're learning. La donne sono del gelo del mondo. And you're not afraid to embarrass yourself. That's, that's good. I'm Evan. Louise. I've been seeing this Italian girl. She's really pretty. So... I only get to see you at night. There were nights together. Must remain a secret. She acts kind of weird sometimes, and I found something that gives me some doubts. 
Are you really from around here? I'm half undiscovered science, bunch of confusing biochemistry, and some crazy hormones. You probably lie a lot. I've actually never lied to you. Even I'm a mystery to myself. I have a medical condition that comes and goes, and it's a very long story. I gotta make sure you're the kind of crazy I can deal with. Italian women, the best. I think you could be the love of my life. I don't think you're ready for where this is going. Explain it. if you're lucky. Life probably seems short no matter what. All righty, spring. That sounded super stuttery for us. I don't know whether that was just us or mm. if the feed or whatever it was. So if it was kind of weird, there's our first fuck up of the night. Yeah. Uh, spring 2014. Uh, it's billed as a romantic body horror film directed by Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead starring Lou Taylor Pucci and Nadia Hilker. Uh, plot's pretty. Si- this is this is a pretty simple plot, you know. It's the type of thing where these guys are really good at kind of setting up a a story and giving you something, and then like ending somewhere up, ending somewhere else completely different. Mm. So, uh, main character you got Evan. He's a young American. Uh, we learned at the beginning of the film he's losing his mother to cancer, and she passes away. He attends her funeral. Uh, and he's with his friends. Uh, one of them is Jeremy Gardner, who you guys will recognize from The Battery, uh, Sadistic Intentions, and a number of other movies. Uh, they're kind of just talking. He knows the barkeep. He actually works at the bar. He gets himself into a physical altercation with another man because this other guy's just a fucking dick. <laughs> um, it's such a, like, the moment, too, is, like, so like stuff like that like drives me insane because it's so actually really, like, what would happen. Mm. He's sitting there, he's just doing his thing, he's drinking his beer, he's doing whatever, and we know that there's two people, other people there that are kind of just, like, loud and obnoxious, and so he, so Evan gets up to go to the bathroom, this other dude just, like, walks directly into him. Yeah. Like, doesn't even attempt to, like, move out of the way, just walks into him, Hmm. slams his shoulder into him, and is just like, hey, man, fucking look out. Yeah. And And this dude's just like... Man, not the fucking day. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, just came from my mother's funeral. My life is in complete disarray. Not the day to fuck with me. Yeah. And the dude is like, Ugh. so he just fucking punches him in the face and then beats the shit out of him. Yep. And then there's that whole, like, the girlfriend is like, ah, you're going you're gonna to kill him. Ah. It's like, well, dude fucking started it. Yeah, that's. I've se- <sighs> I mean, isn't that like the story of it always is that, you know, you start it and then somebody freaks out because you finished it. They started it. Yeah. I'm just finishing. Fuck you. It's that whole like bit off more you more than you can chew scenario. Yeah. It's that. Oh, shit. My dick fell off. while I was in the bathroom. I got to be a tough guy now. Yeah, and this will come into play in the other movie in the in the second movie, too, of the like, you know, knowing when to fucking quit. <laughs> like. <laughs> Like, so Evan basically beats the shit out of this guy, mm. uh, goes back home, uh, and the, he realizes that the cops are looking for him because he beat the hell out of this guy, and that's assault, brother. Yeah. Um, so yeah. he's, like, talking about maybe leaving and getting out. He realizes he's got a passport, so he just gets in a car the next morning, and he just calls the airport and literally says, get me on the next flight to anywhere. Mm. I don't know. Where would you go? And that's what he says to the travel agent. <laughs> and she must say Italy because he looks at the girl next to him in the van and is like, hey, should I go to Italy? And she just looks at him. Right, and she's like, right. I don't know you, man. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know you, dude. That is not a question <laughs> other people ask people. No. Uh, so this movie starts off. He goes to Italy. You know, he's traveling around. He meets a couple of a couple of English guys that uh, party him into the ground. Yeah, like, they appear to be thinks- football hooligans. Very much so, like the epitome of the football hooligan. Yep. 
real loud, but they they befriend him and he likes he likes. Oh, they're nice. Befriended. They're nice. Oh yeah, they're loud and boisterous and in your face, but best of intentions. Yeah, they are exactly the same kind of uh, hooligans that Peter Parker ran into in the Mysterio Spider-Man movie when he was on the train. Yes, which I, I rewatched yesterday. Super so. nice and helpful, right? Except these yeah, hooligans are more into sticking their dick and stuff and not so much in the Spider-Man one. Right. So That would have Evan, been a very uh, different movie. Evan comes across Louise, who is this beautiful Italian girl. She's actually a German actress, which I learned <laughs> uh, later on, because I'm like, I know her from some stuff, and she's in The Walking Dead. I don't know. Is she still in The Walking Dead? I don't know. I stopped watching that a while ago. Yeah, I did too, but like, she was in it when I stopped watching. Oh, okay. Um. So he basically just kind of like, you know, gets kind of flirtatious with her. And she's like, yeah, you know, like you want to come home with me? We can go home now. And he's like, whoa, OK, wait, what? Yeah. Well, I got to buy my friend some drinks. He's like, you'd rather go over to your friends to come home with me. And I'm looking at him and I'm like, no, you wouldn't. Because <laughs> she's gorgeous. Yeah. And he, he's like, oh, you know, she's like, all right, you're a loss. And so he gets uh, so she goes and then he um, gets a job on a farm. Oh, not to mention all the guys make fun of him. As well, they should. Yeah. Uh, so uh, he gets a work, gets to work on a farm. He finds a listing for somebody looking for some room and board with you know help on the farm. So he's learning how to do that with an older Italian gentleman. Uh, and then he um, he meets Louise again hmm. randomly in the streets, and they, uh, they 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 strike up a little bit of a relationship. She initially kind of rejected rejects him. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but not they just like, really. I mean, let's be honest. She's it's more of a coyly flirt- playing hard to yeah, get. It's yeah, it's more of a flirtatious rejection yeah. than it is an outright, like, you need to leave me alone. Oh, yeah. So <clears throat> um, they start to build this little relationship. They actually get together. They have what the Italians like to call uh, the love of making. Mm. That, um, yep. yep. Totally unrelated. Have you watched the MacGruber series yet? No, ah, I forgot nope. all about that. It's funny. There's a couple points in there where Kristen Wiig uh, is supposed to be doing a Russian. She's like supposed to be impersonating a Russian woman, and she keeps slipping into an Italian accent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, so she's like, yes, in Soviet and Russia, we go to this. Uh. <laughs> okay. All right. It's actually really I'm good. I'm sold. I'll it's, watch it just for that. It's really it's 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 quite funny. McGruber's got it's got a weird tone to it though, man. Okay. Like, it's got this really weird, like it's played super straight. Okay. But like the things that are going on are ri- utterly ridiculous. All but right. there's no slapstickness to it at all. So it's actually quite uncomfortable and awkward. Nice. But it's good. Nice. It's good. All right. Um also, did you watch when he hosted um Hosted SNL maybe a couple months ago, right after that premiered. Did you watch it? I think so. He did these MacGruber sketches, but there was like three of them throughout the show. Was it like wearing the mask and 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 it was all? Was it all? What's it called? Pandemic related? Yeah, he started yeah. off, but in each one he gets more and more, more and more <laughs> like queuing on yeah. with everyone. I watched it earlier today. I missed it when it was on earlier. <laughs> or when it aired originally, but Melody got to watch it. So he gets like progressively more right wing oh, yeah. as it goes on. And by the end of it, he is fully down the queuing on hole. Yeah. <laughs> but as MacGruber. Like, <laughs> it was weird. What? Funny though. Um, so yeah, so they hook up and uh, <laughs> she, she, she gives, she gives, she gives him, as we said earlier, the lava making. Yep. The, the, she gives him that amore. Ah, uh, yes, that's uh, it. And she has sex with him without a condom. Mm. Uh, and that's a very important part of the story. So, you know, she wakes up before him in the morning, but she has this kind of weird appearance going on with her. So she freaks out and leaves. And this is really the first inkling that we see that there's something off with her. There's something wrong. Yeah. So she, we see her giving herself these injections into her skin where her skin is discoloring and, like, there we see these other scenes where like like her bone structure is changing. There's a point where she looks almost like a werewolf. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, she kills a cat at one point, and then it's just all very it's all very like unclear what exactly is going on. Mm-hmm. So Evan wakes up the next morning and she's not there, and he's like, "All right, okay, I guess I'm, I'm guess I'm gonna go to work." <laughs> yeah. So he goes to work. 
Yeah. Uh, but then he runs back into her again because they're in this like small town. Where they, I don't even remember where they were supposed to be. Thanks. So they were in some small town there somewhere, and like he, you know, so he runs across her again, and mm. he's like, "Yeah, you know, you kind of took off on me last night," and she's like, "Oh, you know, well, you know, it is what it is." Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I did. <laughs> So they explore the town together and like they just kind of they build this relationship and like, you know, we we see these little cracks of something going on with her Mm. in terms of like her giving herself these injections and like her body changing. But we have no idea what's going on. And that is what is, I think, so um, works so well in this film is so many people try to do the thing where they present something and it ends up being something else. Mm. But they as directors Benson and Moorhead together do this incredible job of like giving you enough sprinklings to be like, listen, hang with us. Yeah. There's, there's something else major coming. You know, it's not going to be that like, like the first time you see um, from dusk till dawn, mm-hmm. if right. you don't know anything about it. And all of a sudden it, it goes from being a crime thrill just into a, into a werewolf movie, you know, like 90 degree turn. Mm. Like this very, they give you the sprinkling. So you want to know more. You want to know more. What's going on? Is she going to attack him? What's going on? Because there's a point where like she has to leave abruptly and she kills a really ignorant American tourist. Yes. And Um, in that scene, she is some kind of lizard person. And that's the thing. As I was watching this, I'm like, okay, I know I've seen what these guys have done. And there is, there has to be a good reason that she has been a werewolf type a lizard type um whatever else like like there's no creature in movie history that is all of the universal monsters basically right 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 and Um, and that's and that's what kept me interested is they're not just going to do something stupid where it's like oh it depends on the position of the stars or something and they didn't i like that yeah so they give you the little pieces they get they get they, they 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 put you on the road and you take a very scenic drive to get there. Yeah. You know, like, that's kind of, like, the best way, I think, to explain it. So they're talking back and forth, and, you know, like, he opens up to her about his family life and, you know, his mother passing away and all that's all the things that have happened to him. And he then, you know, asks her, and she tells him that she has heter- uh, heterochromia, which is the two different eye color thing. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so, you know, he sees the condition in a lot of the paintings and stuff that they've looked at because they go to some museums and, like, He's like, you know, why do you wear, you know, she's like, she says to him, she goes, I have two different color eyes. And he's like, oh, he's like, I think your eyes are beautiful. You don't need to wear two different things. Mm. She's like, oh, you know, thank you or whatever. Um, so, but there's all these points where like her condition, condition gets worse and she has to kind of like bail out real quick. Yeah. Um, that guy, that American guy. Like is so ignorant, like because <laughs> we see him earlier and he's the fucking American that goes to another country, walks around with his fucking USA bandana, yeah, gets blackout drunk because he's fucking cool, mm-hmm. and like assumes that everybody is just there for his enjoyment. So he assumes that she's a prostitute because oh, you know, right. like, yeah. you would walk up to any random person on the street who's obviously having an issue because she's like getting sick, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Hey, what's up?" And then he's like, first he's like, "Are hey, you all right?" Yeah. And she doesn't respond because, no, she's not all right. <laughs> um, and then he goes, uh, how much for a blowjob? Right. And she doesn't respond. And so he's just like, okay, cool. I guess I'll just open my pants then. Right. And bad move. Because <laughs> when we see his dead yeah. body the next morning, there are certain parts of his his body that are no longer there. I like calling and, that. I like calling that VHS. His crotch was VHS. <laughs> we like to call that come uppins. Oh. Oh, do I have a drum roll here? Probably not. Whoa. No, not drum roll. No. No, no. No, stop. <laughs> there it is. Come uppins. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, all right. Um <laughs> Uh, so she realizes that she's kind of losing control of this and basically tries to break up with evan and is like hey um like uh we can't do this Mm. and he's like why and she's like you know she gives him the like 
you're not this you're you're what, like falling in love with me and I'm not interested. Right. Sorry. Right. And he's like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" Like <laughs> And she's like, "See you later." So she dumps him and he's obviously utterly heartbroken because this poor guy like at first I'm like, "I don't like this dude." Yeah. And I think you're not supposed to. I think you're not supposed to like him at first cuz he seems short-sighted, he seems ignorant. He also seems very lower class because, and honestly, it's the way he carries himself, the bandages on his hand, the coat, all of it, all of it just says uneducated nobody. I mean, they they were very, it seems like they were very particular in what they had him wear because he never changes really. Well, the, and that's a part of it too. She's like, "Are you going to change your shirt?" At any oh yeah, point? that's and He's right. like, "I came to Italy with just my backpack." Yeah. He's like, "I don't <laughs> have any other clothes." <laughs> that's a great way to save money too, isn't it? So, so it's right, not yeah. like they gave him other clothes. Where she's like, "I, I, I, I got clothes." Hold on. She's like, "Oh, so, so we know that he's in the country, like technically illegally. He was just there on vacation and just like decided he was going to stay. Yeah. So he's working on the farm." And then the police show up at the farm, and he says to the guy, "I love like, this exchange." This is after, and he he says to the guy, "He goes, listen, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be around. Me and my girlfriend broke up, and and the old the old gentleman that works there is a, he, 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 just incredibly nice guy. Like, and he's like, oh, you know, hey, whatever, that's that's too bad. And then the cops show up, and he's like, the cops are here, and he's like, yeah, immigration, they're they're looking for illegal aliens. And he he goes, should I run? <laughs> and the guy just goes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so matter of fact, like bored, like, like it's the la- he knows it's the last thing he's ever gonna say to him. It's just like he's like yeah. yeah. And he but he just books. It, he just runs. He does. He like, doesn't run to the house. He doesn't run nope. past the guy. Just through the field over a wall, <laughs> where everyone could see him. Like the the police were like right there. But whatever, it doesn't matter. As we've seen from Italian movies, the killer could be literally right in front of you, and they'll just go have a shot J and B. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he ran away? Yeah, we'll get him. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> so it's he then time. ends up, so he's kind of, you know, like, bumming around. He ends up in a bar, and he's talking to the bar guy. And he's talking about the girlfriend that dumped him, and he has nowhere to go, and he has nothing to do. Like, he doesn't know what he's going to do. So he basically goes to her apartment, and he's just, like, knocks on the door, and he's like, hey, listen, I know you told me to go away, but, <laughs> like, yeah. I don't really have anywhere to go and <laughs> such. So he, he he tries to open the door because he hears he hears her like grunting and screaming. Mm. Uh, and so he tries to open the door, but the door's latched, and he looks in and he sees blood on the floor. And because, as we've learned, he's actually a stand up guy. He's not a bad dude. Right. He's just you know, he's just a dude. So he kicks the door in and he walks in, and she's all like fucking Cthulhu tentacled out on the floor. Yep, she is turning into an octopus. Yes. Thing. So he's able to find one of her shots and give her the shot. And that's where we learn all the ins and outs of her being like a mutant that's been around for like 2000 years. And all the pictures that we've seen with the dual eye colors, it's actually her and all of them. Uh, and she gives the whole story and all these things. And uh, basically, he's just like, you know, um, so I'm like immortal and I change my form hmm. every 20 years. I have to change forms. And so they figure out he figures Asked her some questions, and she's like, well, if you were to change, you know, you your body chooses the DNA. If you were to choose your adult DNA as opposed to the new DNA, would you be able to stay? And she's like, yeah, but, like, you know, like, why would I do that? And he's like, well, you know, if you have a reason to stay. Mm. And she's like, and so they start talking about love or whatever, and she's like, oh, well, my body would choose. It's like that kind of, like, survival thing I, I felt like. Oh, well, if my body chose because, of, you know, I was in love, it would chose to stay, then that would be how it would be. And so he's like, well, he's like, we've got about 35 minutes left in the runtime of the film. Let's uh, let's see if I can get you to really, truly fall in love with me. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. It was a it was a love story. It was it was about that a a woman that um, is so disconnected from from the reality she's in that she can't even connect with one person right? um, because she's afraid of losing them that's what it really comes down to is is this whole thing is about her entering into a relationship that she knows is going to end in loss and that's gotta after let's even say a hundred of her two thousand years (laughs) if that's what was the case 
she, she would be mentally broken. Right, right, right. I mean, we're talking two millennia of slowly going insane because of you're the only one of what you are. It's It can be very dark idea. So I, I totally get, excuse me, oh my God, I won't stop hiccuping. I totally wow, get why gross. she wouldn't want to get close to him. Because why would yeah, I want to lose yeah. someone else just 20 years later after the last one and the last one and the last one? Yeah, because 20 years really now, like, it doesn't, like, when you get older, there's that whole thing where, like, you know, oh, you know, time moves so slow when you're a child. Well, yeah, because when you're 10 years old, one year is a tenth of your life. But yeah. when you're 40 years old, it's a one four, oh, year is one fortieth <laughs> of your life. Yeah. So, like, yeah, obviously it seems like it goes quicker because the longer you're around, the less amount of time it actually is. Um, I know I had watched this when it was released in 2014, but I honestly did not really remember mm anything about it so when howard suggested it i was all for doing it um and i really do enjoy this i mean i think it's got some issues but i i i like the idea of you know giving something or giving the expectation of something and then getting something else Mm. and i really fucking love actually one of my favorite things in like the film and cinema world and like you know doing reviews and stuff is when like horror fans get fucking butt hurt (laughs) And, like, I saw so many reviews of this of, like, oh, it's, like, barely even a horror movie. It's like, yeah, no shit. <laughs> it isn't even a horror movie. It should be, should be called uh, Love Spring. Yeah, okay, sure. Call it Love Spring. That's fine. But, like, I love butthurt horror fans, man. See, that's the <laughs> thing. Like, did somebody actually say that? I, yeah, something like that. Because the exactly. saying is, Love Springs Eternal. So, yeah, fucker, it makes sense because she <laughs> can't die. Like, but fucking come can on. Can she? Well, well not I'm to give away the end of the movie, sure. but can she? <laughs> um, well, I'm sure through trauma or self, maybe not even self inflicted, but through trauma, I am pretty sure she could, uh, she could die. Right. <sighs> But this is horror. So, That's the thing. Like, what is what are yeah, people's no, what are people's yeah. definitions of horror anymore? Like, it's got a woman who eats people and she turns into various monsters, and it's all based around her condition. What? Yep. What else would this be? I think people just they they can't handle like the idea. That there's more to more to something. Oh, I think there's like there's we've talked about this a million times on the show, and we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about it again. There's so many like film fans that are willing to give anything a shot mm. and give any type of like something outside of the box or something that's more interesting. Like I know we're like that. I mean, mo- uh, most of our listeners are like that. That you know you want something different, but then there's like this sect of horror fans. That just want, like, hockey mask killers or, like, demons from the underworld. And they just need... They don't want anything that's going to make them think. Mm. And you see that a lot at conventions, whereas, like... I hate to say, like, lowest common denominator, but, like, there's kind of that mentality of it of, like... Like, I don't want to... I mean, then there's times where I don't want to think, too, but, like... To hate on films that are have got something else bubbling underneath because it's not what you want it to be does not make it a bad movie. Right. You know, we say that all the time. Like, we'll give something a bad review, but how many times will I give something a bad review that was like, I completely understand why people will like this. Yeah. yeah. So, and this is, I think, the perfect example of that, like, not for everybody, mm. but I feel like anyone that's a movie fan that's willing to give anything other than just your standard fare a shot. This is this is for people that want a story. Right. Horror movies. I mean, the mainstream cookie cutter franchise slasher stuff from the eighties. Could you really say they had a story, or was it just a plot device for kills? I mean, most of the time. Yeah, we're getting horror movies now. More often with stories, actual stories, 
with a reason for it to happen and everything. Huh. Imagine that. Imagine that. The thing is, as you grow older, you're not going to be scared. You're not going to get the same visceral reaction, the thrill, the dopamine and adrenaline and serotonin. It's not all going to flow the same way when you grow up. So your reaction to blood and guts, like... It should be tempered a little bit. You shouldn't still be like Glenn Danzig, who's like, more blood, the more blood, the better. That's a perfect example, though, of like the bad horror fan. Exactly. That's, yeah. Yeah, he doesn't understand why horror is horror. He thinks horror is just scary pictures. If there's Scary pictures and blood and guts. If there's nothing behind the scary picture... Like, DC has a, a character, Etrigan, the the demon. He's not scary. He's a fucking demon, but he's not scary. Probably because he's bright yellow and speaks in rhyme, but still. like Speaking of demons, what about Dan Housen? That's scarier very, to me very, because of the face. Very nice, I, very evil. I don't, I don't, but like, I don't know. There's, there's entry-level horror. There's mainstream horror. There's the weird shit that I like. There's, you know, psychological stuff. It's dr- horror, anime, drama. It all falls into the same problem of it can have so many different categories. Because you have, you have love stories, which are just romantic dramas, you know? It, it can all... Oh, I know, baby. I know. It can all... It can all uh, it's fine. It's fine. All right, Chris, do you recommend and what is your grade for spring? Yes, I love their stuff. They are they are two of my favorite filmmakers. I say that I don't follow directors. Like, I won't get excited for something a director is doing. But there are a couple. Like, like I heard they were making, these guys were making Synchronic, and I'm like, all right, I'll give that a shot. But I'm not. I'm not. Huh. I'm not rabid about it. I'm not like reading all the news about huh. what everybody's doing. Interesting. You know what you just said, Chris? Huh. You're a fucking liar. I am. Sometimes. Sometimes. I'm. Mr. Chris, at what time is it? It's uh three forty two p.m. Yeah. on Monday, February twenty eighth. Yeah. Let the record show. Mr. Chris is a fucking liar. Now let me finish my sentence and prove that I'm not. <laughs> now please continue. Yes, please continue. But if I saw a trailer for something they did, and I'm like, yeah, no, it's, it, it doesn't. I'm not going to watch it if it doesn't interest me. So I'm a half liar because I'm I'm interested in what they do, and I hope that it interests me when it when it comes out. I'm not I'm not the the kind of fan of directors where I will watch everything they do, regardless of whether or not I'm interested in it. I just I'm not that into anybody, so. Not 3.43 p.m., <laughs> Monday, February 28th, Mr. Chris is a half fucking liar. I thought that was established a long time ago, but okay. <laughs> Look at this dog. Look at this guy. Look at him. He's just hanging Look out. Look up for a second. He's just All like, right. when, show, Chris, when, show Chris your teeth. When's it going to be show warm? Ah. All right. Uh, my turn. Oh, wait. wait a, no, grade, a grade. A grade. I'm going to give yeah, it a yeah, B+. Sorry. plus. It's a B plus to me. I, I enjoy it. All right. Yeah, I'm recommending it, too. Uh, definitely something... Uh, that's a little bit different, but not so different. And like I said, they lead you down the path. They're not like giving you, you know, an hour and 20 minutes of love story and then three minutes of monster. Mm. Uh, they're giving you a, you know, you're definitely getting love story because the film's a love story. Yeah. But it's definitely, definitely. Hey, quiet. <laughs> if I can hear him. Yeah. If I can hear you yelling. <coughs> you yelling from out there you need to be more quiet if i can hear you yelling the whole world hears you yelling the whole world <laughs> just a little bit more quiet travis he's playing Fortnite with his friends and he gets like super angry. oh yeah yeah um so uh yeah i absolutely recommend it. i love i love when you have something that's something else and i like i said i love butthurt horror fans and i love <laughs> I, I love reading the reviews of like oh well then you must have loved um, the uh texas chainsaw massacre comments i haven't watched it yet so i haven't looked at uh, it the only mistake i, I think the movie might have made is that the main girl in the blue shirt with the bushy eyebrows is not related to uh the dude in the wheelchair from the first movie 
Okay. She looks like she could be, and I wanted him to end up being like a niece or something. Um, but no, that didn't happen. So don't expect that going in. I wasn't expecting. I, as soon I as you happen. see her, you'll be like, oh, yeah, they're definitely related. <laughs> so, yeah, I recommend spring. Um, and as far as the grade, I'm going to give it a straight B. It's a little slow in the front half. Takes a little bit longer than I would like for it to develop. Uh, but I mean, once it gets going, I, I'm on board with everything they're doing. Mm. Uh, and you know, I like just about everything these guys have done. I haven't seen the newest one yet, but, um, I like, yeah, I mean, they're thinking about what they're doing. Yeah. They're, they're attempting to do something different. They're attempting to give you something you're not getting in other places. Uh, and I think their stuff sits very well in the, like, I hate to say this term cause I hate the term elevated horror, but like. That's the type mm. of stuff they're doing. If you need to use that to explain it, so be it. Um, but that's, I think, kind of where they're, where they're living. And it's great. And it's available to watch on Shudder. It's also available to watch on Hulu. So there you go. Yeah. All right, next. 1989's The Firm, directed by Alan Clark. Actually, it's not 89. I think it's earlier than that. Oh, it was made in 87 and then released in 89. All right, so, so The Firm is a made... For television movie directed by Alan Clark, who also did Made in Britain uh, and a bunch of other movies. Uh, he died young. He died when he was 54 because he was like a five cigarettes a day, five packs of cigarettes a day smoker. That's a lot. Died of cancer. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a uh, hundred cigarettes a day. I don't know if it's actually that many, but like he definitely died of lung cancer. Yeah, that makes um, sense. So uh, this was a made for TV, a made for TV movie of. Um, part of a series and i don't have the name of the series in front of me and it's for some oh reason, like take it. two or something something like that but it was like part of a series ongoing uh on bbc so it's directed by alan clark written by al uh al hunter ashton uh produced by david thompson starring gary oldman leslie manville phil davis and charles lawson all right i am going to play the trailer for some reason the last trailer was super super skippy and robotic uh i'll stop it if it gets bad but um here, take a look, everyone. Right. Let's do it. I'm Recruit International Firm. Do you want to know what? I told you I am just going to have him! Dear, dear Riverside, <laughs> your platform is amazing in so many ways <laughs> when it works properly. Yeah. Which, guess what? It doesn't most of the time. Now, is it recording okay and the audio is just too much? I don't know, but if it's got a live streaming option, I should be able to play these videos. Stupid. I'm just going to... And now it won't even let me stop it. <laughs> of course not. Unreal. All right. How do we get minimized? How, how do I get rid of it? I don't want it there anymore. It's just a bunch of yelling for the rest of it. Yeah, yeah. Sean's like, it sounds I'll really bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We come in peace. We leave you in peace. Oh. Oh. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unreal. Well, guess what I won't be using again? The, the built... Zeus in the chat room says it sounds like Mr. Roboto. Dario Domo Arigato. <laughs> I was listening to that Man. yesterday. <laughs> so uh, Riverside will be re will, will be receiving yet another strongly worded email from me. Really, really happy I paid for a year of this service. They'll have you go um, through and check your uh, crash logs or something. A uh, totally yeah, unrelated. no, they're like yeah, and like last week it was or we were trying to clear it out. They were like, here, clear your clear your cache, dude. No shit. Yeah. Like, I, I do this. I've been doing this for 14 years. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. 
Meanwhile, it's your software. Meanwhile, you're talking to somebody that's been there for six months and is working from home. Yeah, they didn't even know what a podcast was before January. <laughs> like, oh, 14 years. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Just fucking let your stuff. If you know what? Hey, if the media players don't work properly, don't put them in the software yet. Yeah. Well, there's that. I mean, what do you want from people? Jesus. I don't know. It should <laughs> be really fun when we go to. Pl- when we go to play the segments later. What about, um, God forbid you try to do a Halloween throwdown through this. <laughs> <laughs> the Firm, 1989, directed by Alan Clark. Uh, Clive Bissell, better known as Bex or Bexy, uh, is um, the main character. He's played by Gary Oldman. He's a married man. He's got a young baby son. He's the leader of the hooligan firm known as the ICC, the Inaceti Crew. His wife is no longer approval, no longer gives him approval for his activities as a football hooligan because he's like a real estate agent and has a young son. And everything we've learned from the number of football hooligan movies we watch is that these people are children <laughs> that just don't know how to grow up. Uh, <laughs> like, here's the thing, man. Could you imagine if I was out there when the Bruins were playing, starting fist fights with Montreal Canadiens fans? Right? It's so like, strange. Here's the thing, man. I'm from I'm from the Boston area. We know how, we the- know in Boston <laughs> how to take a pepper spray bullet in the face. I mean, I don't know what this we is. Well, she did. She but, died, unfortunately. But the cops have learned how to, to shoot say, pepper spray bullets at us the proper way now. What I was going to say is, yes, there has been a fair share when the Boston sports teams have won things. Where people get a little crazy. Yeah, this is this is slight, you know, just but a couple cars turned point, over and burned. My point is though, like they get crazy when like the Red Sox win like the World Series. They win the championship. It's not like all of the fans of the Red Sox load on to the Excella Express on the way to Yankee Stadium, getting into fist fights with every Yankees fan they come across. Mm. I'd be a liar if I said there wasn't stories of some fights, but like yeah. these guys make like a point to just fucking cause mayhem everywhere they go in the name of their football team. Yeah, and it's not like the hooliganism here has moved past it into what I was expecting to end up as uh, bringing the two gangs together for, a, a, and just starting organized crime. I figured that's the direction it was going in. Not some... F- sure, that's a, sure what they're trying to do, I feel. Yeah, but it was just some fucking man baby who just doesn't like it when people say shit about him. Fucking grow up. What the fuck? This is the dumbest club I've ever seen anybody belong to. Including Scientology, I know, like, I mean, it, I don't know. The QAnon club is pretty, it's pretty bad. That's a cult. They stormed that's, the fucking. That's a cult. They, <laughs> they basically they stormed the fucking nation's <clears throat> capital, man. So yeah, no. Maybe t- we don't have a leg to stand well, on. Well, I, I guess hooliganism is 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 in a way a little bit of terrorism if they are wrecking shit and and people are getting hurt. Why not? I don't know. I don't I care. Don't. So, it's the I mean, dumbest fucking thing to be a soccer hooligan. I, I can understand getting in an argument. I get that. Tempers yeah. and... Are you so, I mean, and the thing, here's the thing. There's only one scene in this film that even takes place at our soccer stadium. Yeah. And it has nothing to do with the story. So they're like talking about how they want to band together with this other, with this other group, this other firm. And join together to make a national firm and travel to like, I don't know, the World Cup or whatever the... European championships or whatever it was. And like they can't get their shit together, so like they start this turf war between the two fucking hooligan clubs. It just seems and, like, like a- it's not it's not mm. about it's not about anything other than whose dick is bigger. Yeah. 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 Now again, I don't live I don't live in the UK and I know that soccer hooliganism became like an organized crime thing. And this time period is when that was really starting to happen. And I know in the other soccer hooligan movies like ID and then the stuff that we saw like in some of the skinhead flicks we watched, like um like Made in Britain, like Romp well, Romper Stompers in the UK, it's Australia. Yeah. But like there's that whole like 
the support of the soccer club, sorry, the football club, is the excuse to cause the mayhem. Like, that's the excuse. Yeah. But, like, in this story, uh, I mean, first and foremost, I, I'm going to give Gary Oldman his due. He's fucking incredible. Oh, the actors, so the good. actors are top notch. The actors are fantastic. I would say even all of the actors in this are great. Uh, very believable. Yeah, very, very believable. believable as immature fucking dickheads. Yeah, like, I mean, so, like, the rival gang, the Buccaneers, uh, so they, they ruin, his, they ruin wait, his car. Wait, wait. The Buccaneers football. Th- I didn't see Tom Brady in this. What the fuck is going on? Tom Brady retired anyway. Plus, he's going to Yeah, come but back this was filmed years. previously, so, like, it's not a representation of now. What are you talking about? I have about? no fucking idea. All right, stop talking then. All right. They ruin his car. And, like, again, the guy that lives next door to me, he's a Yankees fan. You know what I'm not going to do? Kill him? Destroy his property. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to go over there and write, Big Poppy was here over his car or whatever, you know? Like, it's just it just seems so ridiculous to me. So they, like, they ruin his car, so he's like, well, we got to get back at him. And, like, it just freaking gets, like, more and more, and then they get into, like, knife fights, and, like, yeah, they're trying to go to Holland to to, like, support the international team. And that's where he's like trying to bring the gangs together and try to organize it. But uh, and what what ends up ruining it is Bexy's like, well, I'm going to run it. And then the leader of the other club is like, well, why are you going to run yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. He's like, well, I want to run it. And he's like, well, no, you can't because I'm going to run it. And he's like, well, you know what? Fuck you then. <laughs> it's just like yeah. if you're going to support the team, go to support the team. You don't need somebody to run it. Yeah. But I mean, like, don't we learn from this? The team is you elect you elect somebody to buy the train tickets. Bexy, you pick up the train tickets. I'll get. The, I'll call the Ubers <laughs> like that. Like that's what, yeah, that's what you need. You don't need to run the guys that are going to support the team. Yeah, maybe somebody goes and picks up the jerseys. <laughs> no, I own a handgun, so I'm going to run the club. What are you talking about? Run the club? We're going to cheer on the soccer team. Yeah, that's the strange I don't thing. Get it's it. like it's like. The only time that kind of shit should happen should be like, all right, you know, it's all uh, this movie. Ha- it's all pre. You got to pick your seats, so one of us has to get the tickets, so we're all sitting together. That's the only time. Like that's right. I mean, it, that's as complicated as it should get for yes, going to the, something but, you enjoy. Right. So Bexy as a character, though, I mean, his whole thing is like. He looks at himself as like he's the leader and he uses uses that like clout and his social status to really like <laughs> intimidate everybody. I'm sorry, I'm just and be like, no, no, I get dude, I get it. Trust me. <laughs> like in like so all the younger guys like look up to him and like he actually is like kind of like you know, he's got some natural qualities, like he's a natural leader. Um sort and he basically, of, but he's know, also it, the oldest one in the group, isn't he? Well, that's the thing, too. Yeah, he's the oldest one in the group. He's the only one that's got, like, the wife and kid at home and, like, um, basically just can't get out of his own way and just wants, like, you know, he needs to be the top guy or he's got to be the top boy is what they call it. Yeah. And I'm like, boy, I'm like, dude's already, like, 47 years old. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so the, 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 the firms decide that they're going to fight each other <sighs> to see who's going to lead the lead the crews to to the european championships or whatever it is it uh, it so sounds like, so fun i'm saying this okay in a room filled with plastic toys star wars pops whatever but right. that behavior sounds so fucking stupid and infantile yeah i said it <laughs> i don't get it right. and there's this awesome point too where like he gets into it with his wife because, of course, his wife kicks him out because he sucks. Yeah, he's a piece like, of shit. He's awful. Yeah. I mean, he leaves his knife, his makeshift knife, like, laying around, and the baby picks it up and, like, starts stabbing himself in the mouth with it. Not, like, stabbing himself in the mouth, but, like, he puts it in his mouth and he's, like, doing what a baby does because you don't leave a knife laying around where there's a baby yeah, in the it house. Yeah, like, it was like a, like a, an exacto. Style. Yeah, so it was like it was like a razor blade. So the kid yeah. obviously cut the shit out of his mouth. And what does he do? Yells to the wife, hands the wife the baby, 
and sends her off to the hospital and he doesn't do anything. Right. Like he gets upset and he's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But he's like, here, take the kid to the hospital. Right. And then after that, the wife just lays into him. Yeah. And she's like, you're a fucking joke. Yeah. yeah. She's like, you think you're this hot shit and all these people look up to you. He's like, you're, she, she says to him, she's, you're a joke to them. Yeah. Like you think they look up to you and they respect you. They don't. You just happen to be the guy that's there. And when you're not there, somebody else will be. That is true. That is always true. There will always be someone else. Yeah. And he, but then he's like, "Oh well, I'm such a." And he says, "I don't remember exactly what he says, but he's like, he's he's basically he's like, well, I'm more crazier than the rest of them. I'm I, I'm not afraid to be violent when I need to be violent, and they respect that." And she's like, "Whatever, man." She's like, "Get out." Yeah, it's like, Get are out. you don't bragging? Move. You think this is a brag? <laughs> like, yeah. but nobody wants because he's crazy. No one wants to like. Be like, dude, you're not the dude you think you are. Yeah, he will intimidate and fuck with people that didn't do anything wrong. So he's he's right. he's it's it's some kind of psychotic bipolar disorder he's got going on where he has to be a sociopath because he takes pleasure in other people's discomfort. Right. So which is which is ICC sorry, day- it's very on brand for Gary Oldman. So it wasn't yeah. surprising. <laughs> No, you know, you're 100% right. Uh, but so the ICC, they keep getting into these different fights with the gangs, but the whole thing is they got to they gotta beat they gotta beat up the Buccaneers, the, the guys that have been, like, their main their main rival or whatever. So, like, the guy that's the main guy in the Buccaneers is this guy named Getty, and it's because he's got the really, really blonde hair. So you know there's going to be a conference because he was the other guy that was like, oh, no, I'm going to be the top boy. And then Gary Oldman was like, no, my dick's bigger mm-hmm. than yours. Um, so they get into a fight and Gary Oldman's Bexy beats the shit out of him. Like he beats him up. He throws him out the door, the bar, the bar, the, the, the pub they're in and, you know, beats the, beats the tar out of him. And basically is just like, yeah, I got you really, really good. And I showed you and, and, and fuck you. And so what does Yeti do? He takes out a gun and fucking kills yeah. him. <laughs> like shoots him right in the chest and kills yeah, it, him. Cause he was, he and was so, coming in to hit him again. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that, that, that plays. Yeah, no, yeah, totally tracks. So, <laughs> totally tracks. So like, you just got murdered. Good job. For Good nothing. job, dum dum. You just got murdered. You got you just got murdered yeah. for nothing. Yeah. Because you wanted your crew to be the number one soccer hooligan crew. What does that do? Nothing. Yeah, but then it's then and it's then, fucked up. I know. Yeah, yeah. Because then after that, we see the surviving members of the of the, of the ICC celebrating the guy as a hero. Yeah, because he brought the two groups together. Yeah, he's still dead. He is definitely still <laughs> dead, yes. <laughs> They're basically like, all right, the groups have come together because the other leader's gone and dead now, uh, and we're going to celebrate him by going and starting fights and supporting supporting the European clubs when we go to the tournament. Hey, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, I am totally 100% for celebrating people after their deaths. So... To test this, let's start with Putin. And let me let me let me test this theory out. Somebody get on that. We have enough fucking drones. Can we just like disguise them as Canadian geese or some shit and fucking end this? Sorry, yeah. So, um I don't know. I don't know where you're going. Like, I'm just like if killing people is what solves the problem. Just saying. So you want me to did I did I give this a recommend or not? Oh I oh hang on. <laughs> All right. Do you recommend and what's your grade for the firm? I am not going to recommend this. It's it's an uh, mercifully an hour and 8 minutes long. Yep. Um I don't I can't identify with the mindset. There's nothing that they put like spring, like for instance, since we just we just covered it. Um, spring is something you can identify with because everybody's been attracted to somebody else and wants to really give it a shot and try it and and see what happens. I can identify with that. Um, but this, I can't identify with going out and causing trouble just to cause trouble because I'm not fucking a 19 year old skateboarder anymore, you know? Like, 
like when I had when I had kids, like things things change. Things have to change. They don't have to change drastically. It doesn't have to change who you are. But if you're a fucking soccer hooligan that enjoys beating people up, don't have kids, maybe, or stop. <laughs> that's that's an option, right? Stopping. <sighs> So I just, I can't get into it. I can't get into the mindset. I've never been into something so much that I would hurt somebody else if they liked something else having to do with what I liked. It just doesn't make sense. I never understood riots here. I never understood soccer hooligans over there. It just doesn't make fucking sense to me. So I can't, I can't get into the story. So there you go. I hear you. Um... However, the acting was really good. It it did feel claustrophobic at times because the houses are are pretty squished together, and and it did yeah. it did feel at times like this guy. It, you could feel the pressure on the screen um, that this guy's feeling just physically. So that all it's a well made movie. I just don't. I cannot give a shit about the people. So. <sighs> Uh, still B minus. Okay. Just because I don't like them grade. doesn't mean it's not good. It just I just won't watch it again. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, uh, I think I'm gonna recommend it mm. though, only because the the performances are excellent. It's really short. It's well made. Alan Clark obviously, um. Is a it, it, you know he did a really good job with the stuff that he was you know for the short time that he was with mm. us. Um, is this the best soccer hooligan movie I've seen? No, uh, I liked ID better than this. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've also seen Green Street Hooligans, which I think is pretty good. Um, but like, I get, I'm like you, I don't understand mm. it. Being a sport, and, and it's even harder for me to understand because I am a sports and fan. a wrestling fan and on top of it if anybody I would imagine right. wrestling fans because you identify with a character an individual right but that's the whole thing too like today's wrestling fan you understand it's a show yeah you know what I mean yeah. like the term kayfabe is basically like you know if you're keeping up kayfabe means you're still living the gimmick right like there's no gimmick here though these guys just thought they were important right for no reason other than they were loudmouth jerks. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, mission accomplished. It's, I mean, there's not definitely. I mean, Alan Clark is not trying to make these guys out to be the good guys. You're not supposed to root for right, them. Right. And I and I get that. And that's the point. So that's. I mean, he succeeded in that. But it's really frustrating because I don't understand it. Like, I don't understand like how like you could die. Mm. For something like yeah. this. Like, you know what? If someone told me they were going to kill me, if I never went to a Celtics game again, I'd be like, that's fine. I'm a Lakers fan. Now. <laughs> I don't know. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I like making homemade I mean, soups Le now. LeBron, Le 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 LeBron for life. That's fine, man. Like, Oh, you want me to root for the Knicks? All right. You cool. want me to root for nobody? Um, I can do that, too. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you also want me to just live in a barn? Sure. Is there heat? Um, <laughs> I don't even need no, that. No, I do. I definitely do. <laughs> Got it. Got a blanket? Uh, so uh, I'm going to recommend it because I think it's it's well made. It actually is a pretty good showing of the time period. Gary Oldman is excellent. Yeah. I love the wife, Leslie, Leslie Manville, too. She was like great. Oh, she was. Yeah. Because she was so exactly what she was supposed yep. to be. And that scene where the kid puts the knife in his mouth and stabs himself and like when he realized, like they that, that little baby, like I don't know how they did it, but like there's a moment where that kid realizes all of a sudden that he has probably injured himself uh, my, and just starts screaming. Yeah, my bet is somebody off stage yelled at him and startled him. Maybe, maybe. Um, so I'm glad that I watched this, uh, but it's not something that I think you necessarily need to search out unless you're already interested in the subject. But I am going to recommend it if that makes right. sense. Uh, and for a grade, I'm going to give it uh, a C plus. Hmm. I'll give it a C. That's plus. what I was going to go like, with. But mm. I think I would like a little a little bit. It's really short. It's only an hour and eight minutes, as you said. But I think if I had gotten five more minutes of character development on the ins and outs of the gang and why they were doing what they yeah. were doing, I just needed a little bit more why, a little bit more why. Yeah. Like if he had taken it over from his father. Right? Or even I just like a that. scene where they're all like at a game 
supporting the team and then like seeing their connection with the team because we don't we don't even know anything about the about the football team they support. <laughs> like we know nothing about them because it's not about football and I get that it's not about football. But you know what? Soccer hooligans, maybe you give me a little bit more soccer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but I don't know. but isn't that the point that it's really not about the games? Right? It's about the group of people. No, it's not. So Right. About your brothers and your family and who you're living with. Yeah. I don't know. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> there you have it, Howard. Thank you for the films. Uh, two great picks. I think those are both good, good, good reviews too. So. Oh yeah. All right. I'm not, cool. I'm, so I'm never had... going to be actually mad at anybody that gives us a movie to watch. I'll pretend, and that's the only time I'm going to say that. Considering most of the stuff that's probably suggested is going to make me not mad. Not as bad as half yeah. the stuff. <laughs> Not as half as bad as the stuff I've made you watch. <laughs> All right. Uh, Joe is slogging his way through the Leprechaun films. This this week, though, we take it to the stars. I've, I've got the stuff loaded up here, but obviously we're having problems with these things. I'll start it, and if I need to play it from something else, I will. Well, hello, Bill. Hello, Chris. And hello, OTC Nation. It's your boy Joe here, and uh, this week Bill shot me into space. He made me watch Leprechaun 4 in in in, in space. Um, and we are off to a fan-fucking-tastic start here. Over the opening credits that any self-respecting person would have removed themselves from, introduce Alan Smithy, we see asteroids and spaceships and planets and all the other expected spacey things. And it's all CGI. But Joe, you might say, there's nothing inherently wrong with CGI, especially when you're doing space stuff. Yes, gentle listener. Yes. But this is low-budget 1996 CGI. Yeah. Shiny rocks. Now gasp. Gasp, I say, as you look upon the work of underpaid nerds generating images so realistic and detailed that the video your local church group put together to get you to stop playing D&D &D looks like Jurassic Park by mm. comparison. Okay, uh, seriously. Jurassic Park was made in 1993 and has CGI that looks better than 99% of everything computerized for the next 20 years. So true. What the fuck happened there? Oh, uh, hey everyone. Miguel Nunez Jr. is here. I, I mean, I guess he needed to fill some time uh, before Juana Man started <laughs> shooting. If I ever made a movie, and I probably won't, but if I did, I would want to cast him in it just to have someone in the film offer him some enchiladas. Low-hanging fruit, for sure, but it makes me very, very happy that that scene from Friday the 13th Part 5 has become a meme. So, I'm 11 minutes in, and this is already my favorite Leprechaun movie. <laughs> Why? Because it's got my favorite combination of things. By all metrics, everything about this movie is absolute dog shit, but you can tell they tried. Oh, <laughs> oh, boy, did they try. <laughs> Near as I can tell, Lepi is posted up on a faraway planet and is trying to woo the alien princess like he's James Tiberius Kirk when a bunch of rando cock-blocking space marines who all watched aliens before filming come to blow up his spot. The writers all, I, I think they all watched Aliens before making this too, because this is a, literally a movie about space marines sent in to destroy a monster who has brought a corporation's profits to a halt, and not only are they, are they expected to defeat the monster, the corporation wants it brought back alive, or at least a sample, so that they can profit further from it. There's even a female, quote, consultant, unquote, who is in over her head, but who has already clearly been set up to be the hero and fall, fall in love with the only studly space marine with an IQ over 85. <laughs> okay, uh, something just happened that is going to be the majority of this review. Because nothing they do from here on will be as magnificently bad, yet funny, as what I just saw. So Lepi was wooing the princess when the Marines showed up. They toss a grenade. Lepi throws himself on the grenade to save his love, the princess. In an act of celebration, one of the Marines <clears throat> pisses on Lepi's splattered remains. A beam of ultra-cheap CGI green mist uh, comes up from Lepi's corpse into the Marines' uh, schwanz, and it's forgotten about until... 
<clears throat> they're all back on the ship celebrating, and the Marine is making out with a lady. And Lepi <clears throat> erupts from the man's dick. You heard me right. Lepi <laughs> comes to back go. to life, fully formed from this poor guy's now exploded dick, and he just scampers off into the guts of the ship. In, instead of this guy's guts. This is exactly Aliens, but only if James Cameron screamed at everyone that the last thing he ever wants to see in this film is someone taking it seriously. If I see one of you chuckle fucks taking shit seriously, you will never work in this town again. Unless you're Mark Jones, creator of the Leprechaun franchise, and the only person attached to all the films so far. I need to meet Mark Jones, I desperately want to ask him why none of these films are connected to the others and why he never feels the need to explain how we got into the story. Like, except for the first one, they always start at a point where you've usually, in good movies at least, been given the barest whisper of a setup. And yet again, this is an Aliens ripoff of the worst degree, as the entire movie is one long chase scene with the Marines dying off one by one. I just listen. If you're going to make an Aliens ripoff, that's fine. It's a good movie to rip off. This could have been a perfectly fine, low budget space monster movie. You needed Lepi in your space movie about as much as the other space movie needed a torture-happy priest of hell in it. Or as much as the other space movie needed an angry, undead drowning victim who is just hell on your camp's liability <laughs> insurance in it. I mean, at least when they got to Critters, I think, 4 uh, in that franchise, when they, when they went to space, it made a little bit of sense since the Krites are goddamn aliens. Mm-hmm. The only thing Lepi 4 has over Aliens is that Lepi 4 is not 20 minutes too long. Lepi 4 is only about, eh, 5, maybe 10 minutes That's too long. That's not bad. After chases and fights yeah. uh, that, much like the movie this is trying so hard to be, go on a little too long, the Lepi gets, <clears throat> I shit you not, sucked out of an airlock into space. Okay. And the last thing we see is Lepi's hand giving us, the audience... The middle finger, and if that doesn't sum this up, I don't know what will. Here's the thing. The good. This is actually a pretty fair example of so bad it's good. I, I hate to say it, I actually enjoyed this uh, on that level. The bad. Mm. The sets and special effects look like they were done by some unpaid interns who were just like handed like a hundred bucks and told to make it work. I didn't grade Lepi 3 last week. That'll get a straight C. Lepi 4, in space, is going to get a C-, minus. though, again, this is a movie that you and some friends could have some fun with. Next week, oh, next week we're going to the hood. So until then, be good, everyone. Very excited for uh, the Leprechaun's trip to the hood, because I really remember loving Leprechaun in the hood i remember being like this is just this is so ridiculous it's hilarious i'm interested in the fact that the leprechaun went to space before the urban area of a major city i mean yeah i mean there's no timeline <laughs> it, in the leprechaun movie seems so don't excessive. try to figure out like there's no canon to follow or anything right, like so that. So it doesn't matter, I know. I just think it's funny. Although, I think, if I'm not mistaken, at the beginning of the space one, they tell you that it's, like, way in the future. Like, the years are way in the future. So mm -hmm. it's like, when they go back to the, when they go to the hood, it's, I guess, you know, takes place before the space okay. one. In, in the chronological timeline. Yeah, that's fine. They did it with Hellraiser. I'm cool. Whatever. Whatever. Speaking of whatever, here's <laughs> when is the birthday of the show? Um, it's, the, it's this month, but do no, we know what day? It's it, it's uh like the begin. It's either it's like the very beginning of February. I don't oh. remember the exact the exact day the first episode went up, but it's either the end of January or the beginning of February. Okay, I thought it was I thought it was middle to end of February, but no, yeah. you're so you're, we're. We're over fourteen. Yeah, we're over yeah. fourteen. We did we the are... we did the show already, telling everyone. 
Yeah, I know. I just couldn't remember. Remember Scott sent in a segment and did he who? Scott sent in a segment. It was a pretty good one. I mean, not the I mean, best I'll work you, he's done, but I'll, t- I'll take your word for it. All right, for you know, so- after after Joe does his thing, I usually hang up and you you play out some just <laughs> you know, previously you, recorded shit. So I mean, you're not wrong, <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, now I gotta stay. Oops, oh. wrong intro. The fuck. Just so you know, I'll tell you after the segment, you. Mel, you've worked your way into a into a inside family joke what? with me and Mel yeah. because of that. Okay. Song. Holy shit! Yeah, with Reverend Scott. There's only one person Racist. that can play Austin Powers if he comes from the '90s. Who is that? Mark McGrath. <laughs> Come on, shut up. <laughs> I don't know. It's the first name. Shut I could... your goddamn. Still mother. a good hey, idea. Who's more '90s than that? Shifty Shell Shock from Crazy Town. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey there, Bill and Chris. This is Reverend Scott. A serious man. Yeah, seriously worried about you playing with forces you don't fully understand. I'm a little so shocked that Reverend Scott hasn't busted a Lucky the Leprechaun yet. Yeah. Is it Leppy or Lucky? I can't remember. Oh, that I just Not- invoked him, didn't I? No, isn't it Lupke? Lupke. Oh. Lupke? First of all, his name is Lepke the Leprechaun, and there's really only two reasons we'd ever hear from that asshole. Either it's St. Patrick's Day, or I stupidly accidentally say I-W-I-S-H, which I will not do right now. So just feel lucky this hasn't happened. Yet. But something that did happen was I finished Season 1 of Peacemaker. But before I talk about that, let's review your reviews of Persona and Blood Simple. So your first film, based on the video game series of the same name, Persona. Cinema. Ah, yes, Persona is one of those quote-unquote important films. Persona is the Mount Everest of cinematic storytelling and analysis. Hmm. Oh, and analysis, yeah. Yeah, because so many people are going to try... But only a handful are going to truly, really be able to make it to that summit. Gee, golly, that does sound important. Can you guys give me a brief rundown of your review last week? So I watched this movie, right? I actually watched this movie. And then I said, I wonder what this is about. <laughs> and then I looked it up. And you know what this movie can be about? The, the three frames of the erect penis. Yes. Wow, <laughs> certainly sounds like Mount Everest. And I don't really remember how the review went. Seems like it was a lot of pressure to do it, though. Don't fuck it up is basically how it went. And listen, I don't think you fucked up anything, but there were points of the review I was just totally lost. Like, what did this part mean? (laughs) Bless you. Oh, my. Bless you. Excuse me. Bless you. Yeah. Bless you. Yeah. Bless you. I'm still clueless, but I'm just going to let it go. It's like you said. It ain't that deep. Anyone that listens to us knows that's not how I review films. That's not how you review films. No. Sometimes we'll do those those the, the the OTC ESIs where we dig deeper, but like we're not like we're, we're not those guys. That's just not you're not. And I hopefully you're not listening to us for that. If you are, yeah. I apologize. Well, there's a lot you need to apologize to me for, but not going crazy deep into reviews isn't one of them. I think it was a great review. Too bad I just didn't understand any of it. I give it a B plus. Can I make sense of all of it? No, not really, but it's not that, like, confusing, stupid bullshit. After that was the review for Blood Simple from the director of Bill's favorite flick, The Big Lebowski. What? Hold on. I think something was factually incorrect about that last statement. Wait a minute. I know. Oh, well, who cares? Anyway, Bill was apprehensive about reviewing this movie, I think. This is a Chris idea. Blame him. Don't blame me. But you did it anyway. Let's hear a summary of that review. This movie is really hot and sticky. Yeah. And, like, there's points where, like, I'm just like, you know what? Take your jacket off. Yeah. Riveting as always, guys. Anyway, this film sounded like it was just an amazing script and had great twists and turns and was entertaining from start to finish, even if Chris kept trying to spoil the whole thing. I'm not going to say anything because we're going to... No, no, it's, it's Come okay. Come on, say something. Change the subject. I, I'm trying. I've no, tried to interrupt you four times and you've kept talking. Um, no, let me say something. Say, no, so Howard's pick... I'm if you want to be- <laughs> I give this review a straight B. 
<laughs> for Big Lebowski. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> okay, enough about those old ass movies. What about my old ass? What have I been watching lately? Well, I already told you. It's the only good thing DC has going for themselves lately. Peacemaker Season 1. And I know, I told you once already how great this thing is, but now I can tell you with full authority that this thing is amazing. And I'm not just talking about the intro to the show. <laughs> Between John Cena's growth as an actor, Peacemaker's arc as a character, fighting against everything his father stood for and led him to believe as a child, to Vigilante showing what a real friend he could be. Waller's daughter learning her real place on the team, just every character on the team figuring out where they fit in, and how they could really depend on each other by the end of the season. The violence and action were handled incredibly well, the special effects were on par with the movie that it was spawned from, far beyond a lot of normal TV shows. And I admit some of the jokes are cringy, but I think that's the way it's supposed to be when you're dealing with an early season version of Peacemaker and Vigilante. They're not the most mature men you'll ever meet, but I think that's why they're really easy to relate to. Uh, it was easier for you. Uh, not, not for me, though. Not for me. And the best part, well, this show is released on a weekly basis on HBO Max, but now it's available to watch the whole thing in entirety. Oh, I've already got these shows. Great. And I'm sure I could gush about this show for another hour, talking about Eagly's hugs, the piano solo, or the perfect cameo in the final episode, but I won't do that. I'm just going to say, go watch that shit. And I give season one an A. I'll probably watch it again. It's just too bad that Bill has terrible tastes and hated Peacemaker. But I just, I just don't like it. Yeah. And I, I no, think since fair. we've started this show, I get so much grief for not liking it. You do. I just don't. You do. I just don't. Sorry. <laughs> Fucking travesty. Okay, that's it for me this week. But make sure you all tune in next week when Joe keeps dealing with the fucking Leprechaun series. And he prepares for his upcoming fucking Trancer series. As you just heard, the Patreon just shoveled a gaping mouthful of it to, to Joe for his next list. Um, I like the pause so you can determine how dirty you wanted to get with that. <laughs> and I'll keep on reviewing your shit and my shit and doing what I do and Joe doing what he does. All with zero appreciation. Those two guys, by the way, fucking, why is nobody talking about them? I don't know. They're fantastic. Okay. More, more people, honestly, I think more people should check out this stuff. You're not and giving him enough credit. <laughs> You're not giving him enough Deja Antoine. Ah, thanks, guys. Fuck, Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> so until next time, I manipulate show audio to give myself a compliment. Peace and love, guys. Uh, so, yeah, this week on the show... Bill did some deep digging. I love. Why am I talking about myself in the third person? I don't know. Do I do that? Is that really is that the thing I do normally? Yeah. I don't feel like it is. Yay, Bill! Bill didn't do any research. How to the internet with Bill? <laughs> Power through it, Bill. Nose to the grind. Ignorant American Bill. I remember how back in the day Bill went crazy with all the sound clips. <laughs> Bill's weird. <laughs> Bill likes the dudes. Bill is failing on virtually every point today. All right, then. Um, so a few weeks ago, I don't remember exactly which episode it was, but you were like, hey. And I was like, yeah. Like, Why didn't you tell me about this band Wigwam? Yeah. yeah, that was just a way that was just <laughs> a way to fun. bring it up. Right. But it's now become a joke in the house. As I told Mel the story of like, yeah, Chris said to me, I'm like, he's like, why didn't I tell him? Like, and she's like, because Chris doesn't listen. to No, music. I do. <laughs> I do. No, I do, don't. actually. But it was actually, I mean, it was funny, though, because you were like, you assumed, like, you knew that I knew who they were before without even right. knowing. You're like, well, tell me, what, why didn't you tell me about these guys? I'm like, I don't know. What yeah, I it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a hair metal band from fucking where, Sw Sweden, Finland? Where? Yeah, I think they're, I think they're. Finish, I think. So like yeah, so like um, I knew but, you were into it, and you knew who they, I knew you knew who they were. So the the so the joke has become whenever something random happens, <laughs> it'll be like I don't know, she'll be making dinner or whatever, and I'll be like, hey, why didn't you tell me about these chicken breasts? <laughs> like, 
ridiculous. Yes. Right? <laughs> All right. Yes, because that's not even close. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Thank you very much to Howard for programming yeah. the show. I'm going to take a look at those uh, suggestions that Mark gave us and see what we can find for next week. Uh, if you'd like to join the Patreon, the best way to support the show, go to patreon.com slash outside the cinema. $5 a month, $5 US dollars gets you access to our show yeah. archives and access to the private feed and all the cool stuff that we do that you don't right. hear. If otherwise. you're in Russia and listening to the show, I think it's going to cost you about $400,000 uh, in Russian yep, money, yep, your, your as dollar, of today, to sign up yep. for it, that's five dollars American. Yes, if you gave me five, five, five rubles, you would still owe me another 15. thousand, <laughs> something like that. I don't know. Uh, thank you guys very much for hanging out with us, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll 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 talk yeah. to you next week.